In this demonstration, let's configure a communications manager server for auto registration where a phone can boot up and without even having been previously configured in the communications manager cluster, it gets automatically assigned. It gets to register, it gets a directory number handed out. Here's our phone, it's an IP communicator, and you see when it tried to register, the registration was rejected. There was a database configuration error. We can translate that to mean this was not in the database. So this phone could not register, it did not have its own specific XML configuration file, and auto registration is not enabled, so it'll just keep trying and trying to register and it will not register. Let's see how to configure auto registration. With auto registration, we have to have it turned on in a couple of places. First, let's take a look at the communications manager group of default, and we see that there is a checkbox checked that says auto registration is enabled for that group, great. It needs to be enabled for a group, but it also needs to be enabled for a specific communications manager. Let's take a look at our publisher. Let's make our publisher the server that's going to be handing out these automatic directory numbers. By the way, after a phone auto registers, that doesn't mean we're stuck with that directory number. We might just use auto registration to get around having to type in the MAC addresses. So here, we'll allow this phone to have a number in the range of, let's say, 8,000 through 8,999. We'll make sure that this box is unchecked saying that auto registration is disabled. We don't want it to be disabled, so we want the box unchecked to mean that it's enabled. Let's save that. We'll do a reset to make the changes take effect. And let's see if our IP phone is now going to register with the communications manager server using a directory number in the range of 8000 through 8999. In fact, instead of waiting for the phone to cycle through its attempt to go out and register, it might be quicker if we just shut down the phone and relaunched it. So let me do that real quick. I'll shut down the phone. And I'm relaunching the phone. Let's see if it auto registers. And indeed it does. It auto registers with a directory number. It looks like we're getting 8003. Okay, great. That's not the directory number we want it to have long term. So with it now auto registered, let's go under device phone. Let's find this newly registered phone. Notice the description. It shows up as auto 8003. We'll go into that phone and we'll give it appropriate settings. This is a common thing that I like to do. If I'm rolling out, let's say, half a dozen phones, instead of typing in the MAC addresses and adding the phones manually, or even instead of using something like BAT, I'll just let the phones auto register, then I'll go back and update the parameters. For example, the description, I'll call this HQ Phone 4 as an example. That'll be HQ Phone 4. We'll give it a device pool of HQ. We want to make sure that it has permissions to call, let's say, internationally, so I'll give it the calling search space of HQ International. I think that's good for now. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's go into the directory number. We'll give it a phone number of 2004 instead of the 8003 that it was assigned. We'll make this a member of the HQ internal partition and let's give it a description of HQ Phone 4. We'll just copy and we'll paste that into the alerting name. Let's scroll down just a bit. We'll make that the internal caller ID. Oh, and the external phone number mask. We're going to pretend that this is in the 408 area code, and I want to use the E.164 standard numbering. In other words, I want the display on the phone and the caller ID sent by the phone to show up as a plus, followed by the country code of a 1, followed by the area code of 408, followed by the office code, we'll say, of 222, followed by a 2, that's the first digit at this site, followed by any three characters. So that's going to be the external phone number mask. Let's save all that right now. And if we go back and look at the phone after we've made that change, we're going to see that it uh, dynamically updates for us. And it's going to take on its new phone number. And based on that external phone number mask, we now have a plus 1408222-2004 showing up as our phone number. Excellent. Can we call another phone within this site now? Let's try. Let's see if I can call another phone. And indeed I can. We can call from one phone to the other phone right now. So we have set up a basic IP phone using auto registration.